welcome to Church on Wednesday. Um, this is the final uh, video of the Philippians series. We started at the campus, but now because of circumstances, we're now online. And this is going to be the final video of the series because we're finishing the book of Philippians today. Um, and this will be the final video of the entire summer. Um, but you can also find online content with the two churches that put on Church on Wednesday. And that is Celebration Church Ottawa. Check them out online. Uh, the link will also be in the description below on YouTube uh, if you can't find them. Uh, you can also check out Church of the Messiah, which is the other church that helps host Church on Wednesday. Um, the link to their online content will be in the, in the comment box below. So anyways, we'll get, we'll get into it now. So if you have a Bible, um, turn to it now to Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 to 23. Um, you can pause the video, go get your Bible. You can also go online to esv.org, uh, thebiblenet.com, I believe. And just get, just, it really helps when you're able to look through the scripture as we read along, as we talk about it. It helps a lot. So we'll begin. And I'll just give you the, if, you have, if you've forgotten or you're your first time coming here to check this video, um, the context, Paul is writing from a jail in Rome. Uh, he's under house arrest. He's in isolation. Very much how we're all in isol isolated right now. And he is isolated in house arrest because he talked about a man. He talked about a person who rose from the dead. He talked about a person who is God, and that is Jesus Christ. And that is why he's in jail, because he talked about a living person. So let's, let's look into it right now. So we'll start at verse 2. And it says, I entreat Iodia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So basically what's going on here at the beginning Paul is writing up to the Philippian church in Philippi. Um, and there's these people who he's really worked, worked side by side with in the gospel. And I guess it doesn't really give a description of what's happened, but apparently they got into a fight and now they're like at arms against each other. And he's asking them to bear together in the gospel. And he's asking someone else to be the mediator between the two to help them. Um, settle their differences. So we'll keep going. And it says in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So again, it's interesting. If you really think about it, like Paul is in house arrest right now. He's alone. He, the only thing he would have would be have guards guarding him. And he's telling these people who are free, who are allowed to walk around, do whatever they want outside, to rejoice. This guy who is in jail is saying rejoice, and then he says it again. Rejoice. Now, this is interesting because all, if you look at his circumstances, his circumstances are horrible. Paul isn't isolated. He's isolated. Um, he's waiting trial to go before people to figure out or to find out if he's going to die, be executed, or if he's going to be released. He has no idea. And if we, like, if we like, really think about it, we're all isolated right now. And it is so easy to look at our circumstances and to be very overwhelmed by them, to uh, feel almost bad about ourselves or angry about like, how we can't go out and do the things we used to normally love to do right now. And that's what Paul is, tr Paul is trying to show them that there is more to just relying on our earthly, um, our earthly things. There's something else. And that is what he keeps repeating in the whole book of Philippians, and especially in chapter 4. 
And what he's trying to say is that our outward attitudes don't reflect our current situations, our, cur our current circumstances. You see, it's about our inward attitude, not our outward attitude. Um, Christians are meant to be seen as different. So if we're always just angry about our circumstances and we don't reflect in what Paul is trying to get at here, we're always going to be not able to rejoice. We're always going to feel at the end of ourselves, stressed. But there's something else that Paul is talking about here. And he says it, um, that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And he says in verse 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. See, what Paul is trying to get at here is, like, you're allowed to be, like, it's impossible not to be anxious about things. But there's something that guards us against being completely overwhelmed by our being anxious. Um, and that is, when we pray, when we pray to God, when we are, when we bring our supplicate, when we're, like, when we're humble before God with thanksgiving, this peace, this peace of God will come over us. When we stop putting our, our focus on our earthly situation, our circumstances, and put it on God, there will be this peace because we don't have to worry about it because the peace of God surpasses all understanding. And when you have Jesus in your life, you have this rock. You have a rock that doesn't change. And when you don't have Jesus in your life, you have to rely on the world that's falling apart all around us. As you see right now, like, there's always things going on in the world that just seem like the, like the world is just falling apart. But Jesus, God, never changes. He's always steadfast. You gotta turn your eyes to Jesus to change your inward attitude. And let's continue in verse eight. And he says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. See, so when you become a Christian, um, there's like, there seems to be this belief that you have to like, stop looking at everything in the world. But that's not what Paul is trying to say here. Paul is trying to show them that there is beautiful things in the world. There is good people in the world. And when we see that, we need to praise God. We need to not, like, we need not praise the person, we need to praise God, because it is God who compelled them to do it. And a good example of this, a good illustration of this is, there seems to be all these videos now of um, people are really trying to focus on the good things people are doing in the world. And that is a great thing. Because it brings people a sense of joy. But in the end, that joy, that joy fails. Because there's only one ultimate joy, and that is Jesus Christ. And if we look closely at verse 9, when he says, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. You see, it isn't just about being, having a head knowledge. Having a knowledge of things is good, but it's about, we must act them out. It's not about being the person who can have the best argument about things in the Bible, in the conversation. It's not about being the person who knows everything, who can quote, like, the best quotes, who can quote scripture, wherever. It is about acting out what, this, what scripture says. You may, like, you may feel like you're that person who can, like, who argues a conversation really well and goes away, but then you fall prey to like sins, to lust, to greed, to gluttony, to really being judgmental against people. You see, when we just, when we just rely on ourselves, we fall. It's impossible not to. We have to rely on something else. And Paul is really, he's really trying to hone that into them because he's, he's finishing up his letter to them now. And he really wants to get this across that there is a peace, there is something that is so great that 
if you just rely on it, you'll have a peace of God. You have the peace of God. And what is that? Like, what, what is it? What gives you that peace? Well, let's continue. Verse 10. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but had no opportunity. And what he's talking about here is the Philippians gave him a donation. They gave him, they gave him money to help him get by in a part. And he's just thanking them for it right now. And verse 11, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in, in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in, in every circumstance. I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Now here, here it comes down. Right before the next verse, if you really think about this, like a lot of people would agree with this. Like, well, this sounds very, like this is, isn't this the point of life? We're supposed to find our own way. We're supposed to do everything ourselves, be self-sufficient. And that's what it kind of sounds like here. But then in verse 13, he shows them what the ultimate thing is that gives them the strength. And he says, I can do all things through him, through Jesus, who strengthens me. You see, you can't do it yourself. If we try to just rely on ourselves in these situations where it feels like everything is chaotic, it will fail in the end. But there is a strength, there is an ultimate strength, and that is in the cross, that is in the finished work of Jesus Christ. They, see, you see, there's no true lasting peace in this world except the truth of Jesus Christ and the work he did on the cross. And that, that is what we need to rejoice in. That is a truth that will never, never fail, it is a truth that will never disappear. It is a rock. It will always be the same until Jesus returns, until that day comes. And if you don't know Jesus, I would strongly encourage you to seek him out, to spend time talking to people, to praying to him. Um, we are here if you have any questions. Um, I would encourage you to find a gospel church, um, people who know how to answer your questions. And with that, I'll just end in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you that we were able to study the book of Philippians. Thank you that you have given us the peace that surpasses all understanding. And that peace is in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Um, I ask that our hearts would be strengthened in that, in that truth, um, that we would turn our eyes to Jesus. And I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And that is the end. That is the end of the video series, um, the Philippians, going through the book of Philippians. And I would just love, I just want to bless you guys and have a great summer. And uh, stay tuned to the online content uh, between the two churches. God bless.